obviously, in the last few years, a lot of things has been taking place. What are the main changes that has been taking place that has uh, contributed to this growth in international events being held in Malaysia? I think the change is relatively, you know, with the, the agencies around. Uh, I mean, Puspal definitely, you know, has, has, has come up to a, to a point where uh, we ourselves are hearing from uh, international promoters and agents that it's much more easier to work with Puspal. Uh, Puspal has come to a point where, you know, they, they understand how important is these events to the country. Uh, same, likewise to the immigration people as well. I mean, when artists come in, you know, it's, it's easier access to come in and it's easier access for them to, you know, to do things in, in Malaysia. And what's more important for these people is, you know, they are all business people. All our all event promoters are business people. They don't do it, they don't do it for charity. Yeah? So once it's ease of business, you'll see more people coming into the pool. And it's definitely going to make things more exciting as we, as we go on. Okay. Well, I'll turn it over to the people who are dabbling in this business. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, for, for your respective companies itself, has, has that, you, have you been seeing that, whatever Tony talked about? A lot of you know that uh, LOL Events brought down Russell Peters uh, last year in May. And we didn't have a lot of problems. Uh, lo uh, people would say, oh, Russell Peters is going to get banned in Malaysia. You know, why, why should we buy tickets? He's going to get banned. We, we can see uh, now that there wasn't any problem. And I've also d uh, done a show with uh, Kumar, which is the drag queen from Singapore. So that is quite controversial as well. Um, but we, we, we got through. There wasn't any complaints. Maybe Malaysia is maturing. We, we realized that the entertainment scene uh, is needed in the country and it can contribute to the economy. So we had a lot of people who actually didn't believe it was going to happen. Like, oh, how can you bring the, these many acts? Are you sure all these acts can get approved? And we had that, that the issue going on, but we had the right stuff, we had the right papers, and it actually did happen. So the uh, confidence of people this year around is a lot better. And uh, just to, to, to add on to a few numbers, right? <laughs> Future Music brought in 30 million to the country last year. Russell Peters brought in 15 million to the country last year. How do you think uh, KL as a destination, or Malaysia as a destination compared to Singapore when it comes to international events? Uh, you know, in terms of the ticket pricing, in terms of the um, interest of acts to come over here. I mean, as a business overall, do you mind it easier to do business over here? Uh, for uh, convincing international act to come to Malaysia, yes. It's a bit tough because a lot of them, Southeast Asia is Singapore. That's it. So like, oh yeah, we're going to go to South Asia, Singapore, and then we're going to go to Australia and do 10 dates there. So it's always uh, slightly difficult for us to convince uh, agents that Malaysia is the right destination, we have the right infrastructure. Uh, the other issue that we have is currency. Currency is definitely not on our side. Uh, so we have to be a sponsorship-driven market. It's, it's very tough to do an event without a sponsor and actually come through or even break even. When an uh, ex tour, let's say, Australia, uh, and then they come to Singapore, they, they will charge the same amount as they charge Malaysia. When we, when we see the currency, it, we have to pay pretty much triple the price. And can we charge as much as uh, Singapore? No, we can't do that because the purchasing power in Malaysia is lower. On the other side, Malaysia is a great tourist destination. There's a lot of shopping here. We, can, we are able to compete with Singapore in terms of uh, bringing tourists in. What do you think from a consumer's perspective, from, from a media perspective, from Time Out, obviously, you guys list all the many events. I think for the past two years that we've seen, it's, certain things are getting, uh, we're seeing more and more events. Certainly our music and nightlife events getting fuller and fuller. And what's actually more interesting than having more events in KLX, actually we're getting attention that are from outside Malaysia. Um, for example, when, when Russell Pizza came down, we broke the news and he said that day alone gave us the highest single-day traffic, one of the highest single-day traffic. And a lot of this traffic doesn't just come from Malaysia, they come from outside Malaysia as well. And similarly, whenever we announce an act, for example, uh, Twin Towers Alive and things like that, and we actually get retweets and inquiries from outside Malaysia. And there are these little fan clubs that are all of them uh, outside Malaysia. Whenever they see certain things that are interesting, they retweet for us and that sort of news kind of grow. And it's nice to see that it's not just confined within Malaysia, you, we do get attention from our side.